So today we're going to be talking about strategies for healthier holidays because it is officially December. So happy December 5th. Um, I think if we had this conversation any later in the month, it wouldn't be totally relevant. So hopefully I still caught you at an earlier point in the holidays. So tip number one, stick to your morning routine. So whatever your morning routine is, hopefully it's a good one. Hopefully it's a healthy one. Um, whether it's getting up and having a healthy breakfast, maybe you do a little three minute meditation. Maybe you have a big glass of water. Maybe you exercise. Cause as you know, your liver absolutely loves it when you can move your body in the fasted state. So if you can stick to your morning routine during the holiday season, that would be amazing. Even if you have people who are staying in your house or let's say you're staying with loved ones, or maybe you don't even have any control over what's happening in your day, just kind of having this time to yourself in the morning to really kind of start your day off well, I think will be really, really beneficial. And in particular, besides exercise, as we all know, um, if you could do a nice breakfast again that has a good dose of protein, right? So when we talk about breaking your fast with a good dose of protein, you want to aim for, you know, at least 20 to 30 grams of protein in that first meal. So those would be some tips and tricks to having a good start to your day. Tip number two would be to stay hydrated. Now, we always think of dehydration happening more in the summer because we're sweating, we're running around, but we're actually really dehydrated right now, kind of for the same reasons. Like we're indoors, the heat is cranked up, so you're, we're naturally dry, we are running around and we're not drinking a lot of water, right? Because we're either drinking, because it's that time of year, maybe a little bit more alcoholic beverages than we would like. So please, please, please stay hydrated. And I know the question that always follows this is, well, how much water should you actually drink? So if you were to sort of Google this or hear sort of what everyone has to say, people always recommend eight glasses of water a day. I'm not sure where this number came from, but anytime you hear like a mass message for absolutely everybody, so like everyone drinks eight glasses of water a day, everyone should take a multivitamin, always question those mass statements because there's no way that that applies exactly to you. So just to kind of give you some examples, so I'm only five feet, but I run hot. So I feel like I need to drink between like two to three liters of water a day in order to feel hydrated. I've worked with men who are like six, four, and they're totally fine with like four glasses of water a day. So it really depends on you and how your body is. So check in with yourself, take a look at the color of your pee. If your pee is a very like bright, I have a lip balm here that I could show you, but I don't think you're gonna be able to see it. If it's a really like bright neon yellow color or very potent, then you probably need to drink more water. If your lips are dry, if your mouth is dry, if you're starting to get a headache, you're probably dehydrated. So look for those cues instead of just, you know, trying to fit in eight glasses of water a day. And tip number three, if it's a potluck, bring something healthy to the dish. So even if it's not a potluck, you could always bring like a side dish or you could always bring um, like an appetizer to share with the group. And just off the top of my head, some of the things that I was thinking about is even just bringing like a party tray with some hummus, that would be a really great snack or appy or side dish. Even doing like a lovely bean salad would be a really great kind of appy or side dish. Um, one of my favorite things that I do is this like grain bean Bowl. And all it is, honestly, it's super simple. It's just quinoa and black beans. I think I do a lime and then cilantro. And that's it. And the cilantro and the lime itself kind of act as the dressing. Like it's very, I'll actually put it into the uh, community so that you guys can all see it, but super simple. And even bringing something like that so that you know that there's something healthy that you can eat, it's going to be very, very helpful. Okay, I'm going to check the chat just to see if there's any. There. Yes, there is. Okay, so drinking too much does not deplete the minerals in the body. That is a good question. Um, you have to be careful with 
it's it's a fine line. You're totally right. If you are over hydrating, then you are definitely depleting your body of certain minerals. Um, so a good way to check in on that is that okay, color of your pee again. Oops, hold on, it's gonna mute somebody. I know, but grab my can figure. There we go. Okay, sorry guys. So to actually properly know if you're hydrated, not overhydrated, not underhydrated, what you're aiming for is you're aiming for like a post-it note color to your pee. So you don't want it to be this like bright yellow and you don't want it to be white like the color of a piece of paper. You kind of want this like post-it note color. So yes, good question. Uh, um, and, uh, another comment. Yes, think, please. Uh, um, B complex 100. So the yellow is always dominant. Yes, very much so. Um, that is going to be a hard one to determine because you're right. When you do take your B complexes, when you do pee, it's totally this like fluorescent yellow. Some really good quality B supplements too are time released. So when you take it, your pee is really bright, you know, right away. And then it's time release. So then like, you know, two hours later, another dose of the B vitamins get released. So then your pee is really yellow again. So that's going to be really hard to, to, to use your urine as sort of like a, a test, oh, excuse me, of your hydration status. So definitely for that, use more like, are your lips dry? Is your mouth dry? Are you getting a headache? Um, paying attention to more of those signs than anything. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, next question, is sparkling water okay? Yes, sparkling water is an amazing alternative. Um, we are gonna talk more about that when I talk about mocktails, but yes, to answer your question in a nutshell, love it, beautiful. Especially the like bubblies or the liqueurs, um, like they're super simple. There's nothing else added. It's just sparkling water with a dab of like natural flavoring. It's great. And then, Next question, there are a lot of places closed, uh, your pool, develop some strategies. Okay, so yes, we'll talk about movement down the road, but sorry to hear about your pool, Susan, that's too bad. Okay, tip number four, drink moderately. So this is sort of, I think, you know, one, your liver can definitely process one drink. Any more than that, it is going to be a little bit more work for your liver. So, and I think it's just that time of year that we're just drinking a little bit more than we usually do throughout the year. So just some tips and tricks regarding keeping your drinks moderate. Um, try to resist having a drink before your guests arrive or before you actually go somewhere. Unless of course, depending on who you're gonna be seeing, maybe you're dreading that actual so social interaction. But most of the time, if it's an okay gathering, um, try to resist having a drink beforehand just so that you can save it up for when you're actually with the people. Um, always try to stop drinking an hour before you leave the party. And that's just one safety, but also for sleep. Um, you want to keep the alcohol away from your sleep as much as possible. Before a night out, set a limit on how many drinks you actually want to drink. So that will just kind of help you go, okay, I'm going to go out. It's our Christmas party. I'm going to have two drinks and that's it. That way you just have, you know, when you do have your two drinks, you're like, you know what? I enjoyed it. I had my two drinks and it's a nice cutoff versus not really having that limit. It, you're more likely to just to kind of keep drinking. And another tip, which kind of goes with keeping hydrated is between alcoholic beverages, maybe have a glass of water. And a real hack for that would be have actual water in your wine glass or your beer glass because then you have to finish that glass of water before you can replenish so try that and the reason why i'm picking on alcohol is because of this so a national advisory group in the summer i believe published new guidelines around the number of alcoholic drinks that we can have in a week so yes from a liver perspective which is what we talk about all the time but also because of these new guidelines as well so what they found is that having over six drinks per week can lead to an increased risk of other health issues. So I just wanted to throw that out there um, and because this is actually way less than we always would recommend way back when. So I think way back when we would talk about women having one glass a day and men having two, 
but now we've significantly decreased that. And that's where that came from. Okay, tip number six, I think, or five, um, try a mocktail. So one of my favorite mocktails is if you mix together two tablespoons of lime juice, um, freshly squeezed, and do a little bit of zest from your ginger, so into some sparkling water. So again, to your sparkling water comment, great here. You could do a little bit of stevia if you wanted that sweetness. You know my whole thoughts on like artificial sweeteners, but um, definitely better than regular sugar. So adding lime, ginger, stevia into sparkling water and you got yourself a lovely mocktail. Don't forget about kombucha too. So kombucha is carbonated, it's sugar-free, there's no caffeine. It kind of looks like a little fancy mocktail and you can get some really lovely flavors now. Like five years ago, there was just original ginger and probably something else, very simple. But now they have these like elaborate, like vanilla lavender flavors. So really I think kombucha would be a really easy, delicious mocktail. Um, about kombucha too, in case you're wondering what on earth it is. So kombucha is basically a fermented tea. So it's a fermented food. So there's some good probiotics in it as, as well, as, besides, you know, being a mocktail. And basically the reason why it's sugar-free and caffeine-free is because the, the starter culture basically eats all the sugar and eats all the caffeine. So by the time you actually get it, it's already been eaten. So that's why it's sugar-free and caffeine-free. A couple of companies, um, I know for a fact, don't add sugar post-production. A lot of the kombuchas out there do add sugar afterwards in order to make it a little bit more tasty. So just be really aware of that. Um, and if you want me to share which two brands, I am more than happy to do that. So we can talk about that at the end. I'm gonna double check there's no questions in the chat box and there's not, so I'm gonna keep going. Okay, practice mindful eating. So I think we get mindful eating and intuitive eating a little bit mixed up. They are used interchangeably, but I was more thinking of intuitive eating when I mentioned practice mindful eating. So with intuitive eating, what that, what one of my favorite principles of it is more about accepting that we are going to eat our favorite food. So let's say for example, your absolute favorite food is a shortbread cookie. So when you do get your shortbread cookie, I really want you to enjoy it. Okay. So Turn off the TV, put your phone away. Don't read. I always read when I eat. It's terrible, but I do. Um, and just sit there and absolutely enjoy every single bite of that shortbread cookie. And that way too, like you'll feel like you've enjoyed it. You've experienced it. You take, you've tasted it. And then maybe you won't need another one the next day because you really had that moment of like really, truly enjoying it. Don't do any negative self-talk, just sit there and truly enjoy it. There's another piece, not about intuitive eating, but just more about mindful eating. And it's called the last bite threshold. I have to do a little bit more research into it because it's very interesting, but it's talking about how like our first three bites of a food, we kind of get the max pleasure out of it. After these three bites, the pleasure sort of dips off so it's trying to figure out where that pleasure peaks and then really just not eating more than that, that piece. So, and apparently the pleasure goes from like 90% to 20%. So it's pretty significant. Obviously this doesn't apply to everybody because I think, you know, some people, you know, probably get pleasure every single bite until they totally finish whatever it is that they're eating. But if that does sound like it applies to you, maybe be a little bit more mindful when you're eating your treat to see if you can capture when that moment is. Okay, avoid overeating appetizers. So this was something that I always do, which is why I wanted to throw it in there because like you, have, anytime you go somewhere, there's always these like delicious appetizers and you're just sort of talking and munching. And then next thing you know, you've just eaten way more than you meant to. And now you're not even hungry for dinner. So really don't stand around the buffet table. Um, if you are gonna have some appetizers, put them on a plate and then <laughs> maybe walk away, which is what I have to do. Um, and really just be, you know, load up on veggies and just try to pick, you know, the, the raw stuff versus the, you know, fried delicious things. Um, 
If you do decide to skip the appies totally, maybe keep those hands busy by enjoying your mocktail, chewing some gum, having a mint, just to kind of stop that mindless, um, the mindless munching that sort of happens with appetizers. Okay, and there is a question. <laughs> I've always had a sweet tooth since starting a program, which is great. I finally have this under control. Amazing. If I have a bite of sweet treat, will I be back? No. So what she's asking is she's been doing really, really well. If she finally does have something sweet, will it kind of set you back to day one again? And the only thing it might do is it might just, it's not going to set you back. Totally not at all, but it might just sort of rejig your taste buds a little bit. So let's say if it's just a one-off and you have something sweet, totally fine. But if you end up, you know, for the whole month of December, having something sweet every single day, remember those taste buds are the fastest dividing cells in your body. So they kind of get used to the salt level that we do or this sweet level that we do. So if you do kind of eat something sweet every single day for the next 20 days, your taste buds are going to reset. So you're going to probably have more of a withdrawal come January than if you were to have a couple a week, basically. Great question. Okay, I think we have three more and then we're almost there. Um, so be wary of holiday foods. And I say this because I think people show their love by making food or buying, you know, boxes of chocolates or, you know, sharing something that they also love. But really just treat yourself to your favorite things. So don't get caught up in, you know, eating all this stuff that you don't even really like, but you're just kind of eating it because it's there or someone made it for you or so really just pick what your favorite treats are. And I truly just want you to enjoy them. Um, if you are feeling a little bit guilty about indulging in your favorite holiday treats, always pair it with like a fruit or vegetable. So if you're going to do, let's say, some shortbread cookies, maybe have a mandarin orange with it. So instead of having four cookies, have two and a couple of oranges. So just some tips and that, tips and tricks like that. But I don't think you have to deprive yourself of your favorite things, but just don't waste it on your not favorite things. Stay active. So I think depending on the weather, right? When we talk about snow and we talk about the rain and we talk about it being dark, I think this is, we have to be, there's a sweet spot here, right? So instead of maybe going out for lunch, maybe go for a walk instead, or maybe doing a snowshoe instead or cross country ski with, with your friends and family. Um, even if it's just starting your day with a morning walk, and again, having that like really lovely morning routine kind of built in no matter where you are, what you're doing, you know, you always go for a 10 minute walk in the morning. I think that would be amazing. Um, what else could you do? You could also do those like things that we talk about all the time just to kind of keep your body moving. So park, you know, further away from the mall or go to the mall and give yourself an extra half an hour just to sort of like walk around. So I absolutely, hate Christmas shopping or shopping in general. So I'm always like in the mall hitting one store and then like getting out, but maybe spend a half an hour and sort of just walk around, get your steps in. So tips and tricks like that. Um, what else could you do? Skip the elevator, walk up the stairs. So just always think about moving your body whenever you can. And last but not least, oh, now my computer's, there it is eating out. So we are definitely going to be eating out more this time of year, just because that's how we socialize with friends and family. It's how we celebrate milestones. We're super tired, so we don't want to make food at home all the time. So when you are going to eat out, I would just encourage you to plan ahead a little bit. So think about if you have three different social events happening on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So maybe on Tuesday, when you're feeling a little bit zapped, maybe make the effort and buy, you know, some deli soups, buy some raw veggies, but maybe just plan ahead a little bit. And if it is going to be a very social week, try to make your homemade meals during the week. But if you have like a free weekend, then you can probably have a little bit more liberty with kind of what you're going to be doing during the week. And we pick on eating out just because one, you're going to be eating 
a much larger portion than you're used to. It's gonna be a little bit more processed. It's gonna be a little bit more salty and they're using those inflammatory oils that we really wanna stay away from. So in a nutshell, I think my timing wasn't terrible. I'm five minutes late, but we started a little bit late. So we are good. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen.